I'm standing here in front of Sanford Dam again. And before I get this video started, I just want to thank everyone for their support. Uh, there's been a lot of people sending me letters through the mail. If you want to send me something, I will pop my PO box up on the screen right now. But without you, these videos would not be possible. Like I said, I'm standing here in front of Sanford Dam. In the next couple of weeks, very shortly, there should be trucks rolling here, equipment coming in. Hopefully the park and the dam will be worked on at the same exact time. Let me turn the camera around now and we can look at the Sanford Dam here in a little bit more detail. So there hasn't been a whole lot of work going on on any of the five dams lately. Tobacco River Dam, as you saw in my last video, is just starting to be worked on once again. We can see the lake bed is getting really grown up out there. A lot of those cottonwood trees and weeds are growing pretty fast. The Four Lakes Task Force is actually looking into treatment options right now. Uh, it's kind of a tricky situation. You know, you could go out here, you could brush hog, all the lake bed and the river bed up here that used to once be in the lakes or you could treat it uh, with a chemical that kills these weeds and trees. However, these options have to be environmentally safe, both for the animals around here, the humans, as well as what's living here in the water yet. So it is kind of a tricky situation. Um, Four Lakes Task Force should be announcing what they decided on going with in the next couple weeks here as well. Over here is the Sanford Park area, way over there where those trees are. It's a nice little splash park that they have open. Probably fly the drone over there and show you guys that real quick. And a couple weeks ago, this is where they launched the Sanford fireworks from. I'm out on this pier here now, just towards the north of Sanford Dam. This overlooks, used to be Sanford Lake out here, but now it's overlooking the Titabawassee River. A lot of ducks right there just kind of grooming themselves and just want to kind of show how this river as it's coming over here into this turn is slowly eroding a little bit more at the bank here so that's kind of interesting and they did put up some new guardrails here so that people aren't able to drive out on this pier you know if they can they will so hopefully no one even would have attempted that but then again there used to be some guardrails that were across here those have now been removed as well as speed bumps here and up there those have been ground down as well now so this is to make way for the heavy equipment that's going to be traveling down here to start working on the dam as well as the park area so you can see a little bit more of that asphalt that used to be across here for that speed bump road commission just finished that work just because they removed the speed bumps hopefully people still maintain a safe and slow speed limit through here but like I said I'm gonna head on over to the other side of the dam now and we'll take a look at the fall area and the park area to the south of Sanford Dam this area is just towards the east of the powerhouse the powerhouse is right in there yeah, and then they did fix a decent amount of the erosion that was happening here but we did get a lot of water the last couple of weeks and look at how much more erosion is happening right up to the edge of the asphalt road and eroding that sand right underneath the cement retaining wall of course they put this new fence in place in front of the cement retaining wall so I'm not sure what kind of purpose that serves anymore besides kind of retaining a little bit of that dirt and soil but we can see how it's just washing it right under there and down towards the uh, transformers down there that substation is the one that is supposedly being uh, decommissioned so you can see there's not much left of it there anymore just a couple more lines running in there but this station over here is the only one that should be needed to keep things operational. Let's take a look at the erosion happening right here on the corner as well. So this used to be a big erosion spot after the dams failed. Now it looks like this area over here is eroding even further. So I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not yet, but this is going to be just a quick Sanford update. I'm not gonna fly the drone very much. 
just probably have a couple minutes of voiceover on drone video, but I'm gonna kind of film a little bit of the backside of the dam, the falls over there, the park over here, and then probably take a walk down through Sanford Village. I'm now on the backside of Sanford Dam. This is towards the south. A little bit of debris out here yet. The water level is actually getting pretty low behind the dam. Sanford Falls are just over there. This cement structure here in the middle used to be the old emergency spillway. And yeah, like I said, things should start to happen here very soon. I might actually pop up a plan, the restoration plan of the interim repairs that are gonna happen here at Sanford Dam. It's actually pretty interesting that they're going to kind of build a road through here, right through where all this water is currently at to fill in the earthen embankment again and start working in this area. Not quite sure what this metal object is sitting in the middle down here, but let's head on up and take a quick look at the park now. So the reason this is just gonna be a quick update is I'm actually here for another reason today. My main reason for coming here is to actually install the new live camera. So this would be the second live camera here in Sanford. This would be one that is going to be focused on the backside of the dam. And being on the backside, we'll be able to see all the new park rebuilding out here, as well as the Sanford dam repairs. So that'll be pretty cool to watch from that camera. It will definitely be up and running by the time any of that work starts to happen. Probably let it go for a week, make sure everything's working good and operational before I go ahead and make the feed public. But yeah, this will be a neat location here. I'll actually pop up the uh, Sanford Village Park plan too. It looks like they're going to be removing almost all the trees in the park and redirecting the road around the river edge. Again, out here, there's going to be a ton of baseball fields. And yeah, we might actually have to move the live camera because I'm going to be mounting it in the park area so we might actually have to move that out of the park area when work begins here but we will be able to see a lot of the progress before i have to do that that blue structure over here i know there's been quite a few people that keep asking about that in videos from what i've been told that is an old housing old turbine housing so that used to be located inside of the powerhouse and that would funnel the water through to the turbine. The turbine would sit actually in there and rotate in the center of that housing. Might actually cover a few more of the details. I know there's been a lot of new people subscribing to the channel and are kind of wanting to know a little bit of the backstory of what happened here. Again, the best way to get this story is to go back and watch my videos from the beginning. I explain everything in a lot of detail since I have been covering the rebuilding here and the failures that occurred over the last more than a year now. In layman's term is the Edenville embankment failed on the Edenville Dam, sent a rush of water down here towards Sanford Dam. This embankment over here was overtoppled on May 19th and it slowly eroded the earthen embankment. So Edenville Dam used to be located on Wixom Lake, so that was entire lake reservoir draining water down to here which used to be Sanford Lake on the other side of this embankment and that gets drained down to the south of here this is the Titabawasi River so it's a pretty massive event to see two lakes fail back to back and all that water had to be displaced somewhere ended up all going down to the Great Lakes as that's where the Titabawasi River runs into, but it was a, a pretty tragic event. No one lost their lives, but there was a ton of damage that happened here along the river after the flooding, as well as here in Sanford. This entire park was completely flooded. An entire neighborhood just to the south of here was flooded as well. People's entire houses were just wiped away. Like I said, that's just kind of a rough, outline of the major events that happened here 
for people that are new to the channel. You know, if you made it through this video this far and are enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. I really appreciate it and it definitely helps the channel out a lot. I'm gonna head on down to Sanford Village now and we'll take a look at how the village is progressing down there. Let's take a quick look at the Sanford Heart here now. This has been almost completely filled in. A lot of these hearts have been decorated by people in the community and in the surrounding community. So it's pretty interesting seeing those all here. You can see there's just a couple of empty spots left for people to decorate here. And this is double sided. So there's a lot of them over here on this side as well. So if you did decorate one of these, leave a comment down below and let us know if you're able to spot yours. A couple interesting one. We have like Sanford Strong, we have Sheriff Department here. We have Chris Billing down here. Did an interview with him if you want to go back and watch his story. A couple really talented art people as well. Look at the detail in this one. So again, that's that's pretty neat here. That'll stay here in Sanford, kind of be a monument. And then just across the road over here, we had the Sanford Grows Community Garden. It's been probably over a month since I filmed this, so let's see how things are progressing here. Looks like we have a lot of tomatoes, some that are just starting to get ripe. Marigolds, of course, are in the center yet. Looks like there's a couple different varieties of tomatoes as well. Those are the larger ones. These are smaller. These plants in here are looking pretty good. So these, again, were the zucchini. And these ones here, not sure what these ones were. I don't see a tag anymore. Here's a tag right here. So these were squash. Peas are looking really good. Able to got some uh, climbing trellises here now. This looks like some uh, cabbage and then some green beans down here. So that's what's in those planters. Let's go over to the next planter here. So this one's almost all completely different kinds of peppers. Looks like they are just starting to come out. A couple more down here on this end. It's almost look like jalapenos. A little bit of lettuce here in the middle I'm spotting. This is just from my knowledge of gardening, kind of spotting some of these. A lot of onions here. Um, they should probably be thinned out and planted individually. But they kind of just stuck them in there. I think uh, from what I recall is these may have been Brussels sprouts. These look like different forms of beets. Some cucumbers and pickles. And these ones here are broccoli. So you can just start to see some of that broccoli coming out. Looks like there's just one more trellis over here for a raised garden. Has a little bit of lettuce in it and some basil. Someone actually brought some nice lawn chairs and a table. I don't think this was here either. It's kind of a nice little table as well. And they do have water here provided to water the garden. This is the back side of the Sanford Hardware. So let's head on over to the front side and then we'll take a walk down Sanford Village. Coming up here on the corner of Saginaw Road and Center Street, the Veterans Memorial is just over there. Might actually swing by there after I walk through the village portion real quick here. We have Harry's over here. Look at the new Welcome to Sanford sign. That is looking great displaying the temperature right now and time. Temperature was in degrees Celsius, so I'm sure it kind of rotates through and does, yeah, there's their degrees Fahrenheit, 86 degrees today. But I don't know how much difference there has been in Sanford Village here. Again, the Sanford hardware is opened up once again. The best damn hardware store in the state is now open. And uh, we'll kind of head up here a little bit further and see what else is new. Every now and then there is 
some people that have some donuts over here as well. So this is, today is a Wednesday. So make sure you stop there and support some local businesses. They do taste really great. And that is located right here on Saginaw Road and Cedar Street, kind of on the corner there. And back down there is Porty Park. We'll head there right after we walk up this direction a little bit further. This used to be the old pizza place over there on that side of the road. I'll cross over there and we'll see how things look on the inside of that building. This building here used to be Lanny's restaurant. Not quite sure what's happening to it right now. Maybe we'll take a quick, quick peek inside. So it looks like everything is still kind of just stripped down to the studs so that nothing molded after the flood. They have a Christmas tree in here. But yeah, hopefully they go ahead and rebuild this very soon. Looks like they're also working on this building right here as well. So slowly progressing. Yep, yeah, that building in here has new drywall on it. Looks like we may have redid some of the windows. And then we come to the Red Oak restaurant here. So the Red Oak restaurant has been opened up probably for two, three months now. They are always really busy and have some awesome, great tasting food. So if you're in the area again, make sure you stop here, check them out. And then we have Cole's Towing over here on this side of the road. For some reason, I lost the audio on this video clip, but I'm back down by Jack's Hometown Pizza and the post office. And this is the location of the new TCF bank. Uh, that is currently being built in this location. Uh, this was going to be a TCF bank, but it looks like Huntington Bank has now taken them over. So this is being built by Three Rivers Corporation and they are just starting to break ground there. If you ever see me out here walking around and filming, feel free to give me a honk or stop and chit chat with me. Even if I'm in the middle of filming, I don't care. I like interacting with people and just kind of talking, kind of sharing stories. So we're now coming up here to the old pizza place. This is not Jack's hometown pizza. This is a different one, but looks like they do have things tarped up in here. May actually be painting or something like that. Not quite sure. How much are your prices? Um, shortcakes are 10 to get two pieces. The nutties are two, the cakes are four. Those cakes are four, and the two packs of donuts are four. Okay. A lot of the times we'll have singles, but we couldn't get our single containers in today. So I see it looks like you're fundraising today as well? Yeah, actually, from we had another vendor that left too. Um, the, the vendor fees go back to help the people in the village. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're raising money for. Okay. Yeah, we're here every Tuesday and Saturday, and anybody that sets up donates and it goes to One Church Midland, and that money helps families okay, from perfect. the flood. So Tuesday and Saturday, yep. make sure you guys stop by and yeah. support them. Thank you. Thank you. Here's what Porty Park now looks like. They actually got the sign mounted up here and some flowers. So there's flowers on each corner of the park. Not sure what that structure is over there, made out of PVC pipe. Maybe I will do some asking around and pop it up on the screen. But things are progressing here as well. I know I've probably said progress a billion times again on this video, but every time you visit, that's all you see is the path forward. Just more and more progress. Hopefully the design for this park is gonna be released pretty soon as well. There's been rumors of dog park and all sorts of stuff in here but let's head on over here up and around the corner and check out the veterans memorial see how things look over here all right we are coming up on the veterans memorial now it's actually a little bit windier day out here today so the flags are really flying nicely maybe get a nice shot of this with my drone hopefully by the time i get back to that it still has a decent amount of wind here this flag pole here does not have a flag on the top of it. And actually what's happening is 
the rope that used to hold this flag at the top has broke. So they're waiting for a new rope to come in here. And then that flag will be re-raised back up the pole. Grass looks like it's coming in nicely. I see a lot of signs that say keep off the grass. So hopefully people are following that direction. And Sanford Strong Rock up here. Let's see if they spelled Dolores' name correctly yet on the back of it. So, not quite yet. Um, Dolores is spelled with an O, not an E. So they haven't got the new plaque in for that yet, but when that comes in, that'll be remounted on here. Let's head on over to the other side of the river here, to the museum. I have a little interesting story I want to share with you guys over there. Now back at the Sanford Centennial Museum. Actually, it's sesquicentennial, so 150 years. And we're here to check out the big wheels again. So this is the interesting story here. One of the logs that used to be on the big wheels before the dam failed has been found once again. And this log was found almost a half a mile downriver from here. So the Titabawassee River is right here, right where the bridge is. And that goes to the rail trail bridge there and then further downstream. So let's see if we can find it. It is the famous P-U-L log. And here it is, you can just see P-U-L stamped in the bottom of this. So this was rescued from half a mile down there and brought back here to its resting location where it used to sit before the dams had failed. There's actually been a lot of these logging logs that have been turned up since the dam failed. So I think right now they're actually just collecting some of the log ends with the stamps on them. Each one of these stamps, this one's looks like C or G Y D E, tells a story of who owned the mill and what log this belonged to. But again, that one there is the P U L log. Actually, maybe pop up the story of who owned that log and where it was heading. But these big wheels used to be used to relocate logs, like you can see these three here. Let's take a quick walk through the museum once again. It's probably been probably about a year since I'd been here last and did an interview showing how the floods had impacted each one of the buildings as well as the restoration that was going into kind of bringing everything back to life and rescuing it so it wasn't damaged from the water. I think the only thing that wasn't finished when I did that interview was this memorial right here. So this memorial is now complete and it looks great. Look at all this. Probably a good time just to take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has served our country. And then over here we have the little trains. I'm not gonna go through all the rest of the buildings. Kind of an interesting thing, if you're here in Sanford, make sure you stop by and check out the museum. Since I was over here on this side of the river, decided to stop by the substation again. For all those people that were kind of interested in this, this used to be where the portable substation used to sit. That trailer would come in and the lines came off the line down to that. Now they have the permanent substation completely running and online in the portable substation. Trailer has now been removed. Looks like they're calling this Consumers Energy Thornton substation. So this was kind of an accelerated project put in place after the dams failed to restore power back on this side of the river. I did ask a couple people about this station over here as well. And from what I've been told, this is probably a natural gas uh, pump station. So that's over there. Let's head on to the fire department now, Jerome Township Fire Department, and take another look at that. We're now at Jerome Township Fire Station number one. So this is the brand new fire station. Everything here is complete now. 
And this is the one that I've been promising you guys that we will get a tour in. So no one's here right now, so we can't get a tour inside, but hopefully that video is coming very soon. You know, this video was supposed to be just a quick update and by this time I'm sure the video is getting a little bit longer. But if you know me, you know I just can't do anything in a broad overview. I like to focus on the small details and be thorough. So that's probably why this video is turning out to be a little bit longer. But if you are enjoying the video so far and you've made it through this far, uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me, like I said previously. We got one more stop since I'm already over here on the west side of the river. Let's head on over to the park area and see if we can check out the Splash Park. We are now in the Sanford Lake Park. I am just towards the west of where I started the video this morning, so I used to be right over there on that side of Sanford Dam. We have Sanford Dam right here in the middle of the screen. That concrete structure sticking up is the emergency spillway. And this used to be the old boat launch for accessing Sanford Park, or actually Sanford Lake. See, they have it all gated off so that people can't drive down here on the lake bed and a fence now running all along the side of the park. So up here used to be the beach area. I'll walk up this way a little bit further now. I'll actually show you guys the Splash Park. But Sanford Park is just kind of a great area to come picnic, eat lunch if you're in the area, if your kids are getting hot bring them out here to the Splash Park. Definitely a lot to do in the area yet. That bridge way over there in the background is Highway US 10. And the lake bottom out here, like I said this morning, it is really growing up fast. All those cottonwood trees, that's most predominantly what we're seeing right here is cottonwood trees. These dark green ones, these weeds sticking up right here in the middle are Phragmites. So those are an invasive weed. They're kind of like cattails, but they're the invasive variety of cattails, as far as I know, are not invasive. Um, but yeah, this used to be all the beach area up here. You can tell that the trees are not growing as well up here not sure why that is if it's just because it's more sand there's not as much nutrients for them to grow or because there's not enough water up here versus down here but yeah over here on the left is the splash park i'm not going to get up there too close because i don't want to be a creeper with a camera filming all of these kids but yeah that's where the splash park is Make sure you come check it out. They have a nice play gym up here as well. And a lot of nice, large, old growth trees growing in here to provide some shade. So that's gonna be a wrap on this video. If you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.